Car by Create version 8 is now out and you may be on the fence about whether or not you're going to download it. In this video, I want to share with you five features that stood out to me in version 8 that I think may impact my workflow. If this is something that interests you, you're going to want to stick around. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Edgar with AE Timber and Pine. And in this video, I wanna share with you the five features that stood out to me and I got them here ready to go. So we're gonna go and jump right into it without further ado. The first one that stood out to me is the presentation of the toolpaths section, right? In the past, we had um, certain icons with text. The icons now are different and are little images. And we're gonna go ahead and show you a little bit more about those. So the presentation of the toolpaths. The second one that stood out to me is that in the previous versions, the advanced v carb and the v carb were separate icons, so you can select those individually. Now, the v carb icon is the only icon that you have, and you have to set up the advanced v carb through that one single option. So we're going to take a look at that as well. We're going to take a look at it all. I don't know why I keep saying that we're going to take a look at it. We're looking at it all. Number three is the simulation has been updated. In the past, it was just the output of the uh, carb is simulated, but now we are able to see a progression of the carb in the simulation. Number four is that you're able to copy an image off your browser, for example, and then come over to Carb by Create and just simply paste it into your design window. You're no longer having to download it, upload it, and then trace it. It's just copy and paste at this point, and we'll take a look at it too. And the fifth update or feature that I wanna to talk to you about is the new window option. You're able to have multiple Carbide Create windows rather than just the one. So we'll take a look at that as well. If this is adding value to your workflow, if you guys like these videos, let me know in the comments. It all helps with the algorithm. Like and subscribe, and let's jump into Carbide Create. So here we are in Carbide Create version eight here in the forefront and in the background here we have version 7 so we'll go back and forth between the two and so like I said we have five different features that I want to talk to you about or different differences between the two versions all right so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at number one which is the toolpaths and the toolpath visual just the way that they present the toolpaths and if you've followed my videos in you know for some time now you know that I like to use just text hello the text hello so here in version 7 we have the seven different uh, buttons that we are able to select uh, one two three four five six seven yep seven different buttons and i think what sticks out is that the v carp and the advanced v carp are different or separate uh, options and that the um, buttons are text over in carb by create version 8 we still have uh, some of the same toolpaths except that the advanced v carb is now missing and the, uh, the the icons are no longer uh, text, but little images. And so you can see here, if we hover over them, we have the contour, the pocket, the V car. We still have the drill, the keyhole, and the texture. Again, the only one that is missing is the advanced V car. Um, again, they went with one single icon with the little V on it. Okay, so that's going to be the the presentation of the toolpaths. Since we're talking about toolpaths, let's go ahead and talk about the VCARB and the advanced VCARB in Carb by Create version 8 and how you set those up. As we just mentioned, there's only one VCARB icon, so let's go ahead and select our text first, click on this VCARB icon, we'll click on Use Current Selection, and here we have the advanced VCARB toolpath that comes up, and I think just, just thinking here through this process as a beginner in mind, I would think that this is kind of confusing when I just type, I just clicked on the VCARB icon and again an advanced v carve toolpath i don't know what that is but just for you beginners an advanced v carve is a v carve with a flat bottom it's going to allow you to uh, use an end mill to remove material first and then come in at the end with a v bit to get you those details that you are needing for a particular design so we'll go over that here in a moment but if you want to set up the the v carve by itself all you have to do is ignore the Enable Area Pocket tool and just simply jump over to this V tool and select your tool, your correct V bit, and um, that's that's basically it. So we already have the 60 degree V bit selected. The max depth that we want to always go with, at least as a starting point, is the thickness of your material. So I use a lot of three quarter inch material, so I would type in 0.75 or I can use this variable notation and just type in T and that selects or enters the, the thickness of my material automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that keep it like that. And you can see here that the blue line here is going to be where the V bit will go or travel. It's the path that the V bit will travel. That's better said like that. And so this is gonna take five minutes. So let's take a look at the simulation. Okay, so you can see here in this simulation, we have a nice V carve. You get that 
V uh, shape in the material. So that is a successful V carve. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would set up the advanced V carve now. With our text selected, we're going to click on the V carve button again or icon, use current selection. This time around, we're going to enable the area pocket tool and we're going to select a, an end mill. Depending on the size of your, your file or the image that you're trying to carve would determine whether or not you're going to go with a 1 8 inch end mill or a quarter inch end mill. Since this text is pretty small, we're going to go ahead and keep it with the 1 8 inch end mill. Here you're able to click on edit and then mess around with the plunge, feed rate, and your speeds as well, just as before. And then you're going to come in here and select your V-bit, and that's going to be the second tool to finish off the design. And then you're able to edit those speeds and, and feed rates just as before. Here you're going to want to set a max depth other than the thickness of your material because in this case it will go through the entire piece of your material. So in this case, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to carve, it, that would determine right the thickness or the, the max depth that you're trying to carve. And so in this case, or in many of my carves, really I just go 0 0.04, 0 0.04. And to just give you a reference here, um, I make a lot of rustic flags. And prior to getting the CNC, I would simply use a Dremel to take away the, the layer, the top layer of the stain or the paint. So I wasn't carving really thick. I wasn't going in deep into the material. So, so likewise, that's what I'm trying to do here with the uh, CNC now to do the work for me. So 0 0.04 seems to be a good, good max depth to just simply remove a top layer of material. So 0 0.04 is a good max depth for, for a lot of just signs. So we'll click OK now. And as you can see here, we have the tool, two tools um, and their paths. So this path here is going to be for the end mill. You can see it because it's a little bit wider. There's a little bit of gap here. But as we zoom in, you're going to see that these tighter areas is where the 60 degree V-bit is going to come in and, and knock that area out. So let's take a look at this simulation. Okay, so here's the simulation for the advanced V-carve. And as you can tell, that is a perfect, at least in the simulation, uh, part is a perfect simulation of an advanced V-carve. It's a V-carve with a flat bottom. And why do I say that? Well, we're getting a flat bottom like a pocket toolpath would give us, but then these walls here um, are going to be slanted or sloped, kind of like the V-carve gives us. So that's going to that's be your indication there that it is, it is an advanced V-carve toolpath. So it's a flat bottom, kind of like a pocket, and then you get these sloped walls. If you carve deep enough, you'll see them be a little bit more pronounced. When you carve at 0 0.04, you'll still see it, but not as much. Um, but I, I, I always, this is my, I always say that this is my favorite toolpath. It's just a better pocket toolpath. So that is the Advanced VCarp versus VCarp in the Carb I Create version 8 program. Staying with this particular example, I want to show you the simulation process now. I think it's a really cool uh, feature or addition to the simulation tool because now we're able to see the progression of the carb. And for me personally, it's helpful because I'm able to see the simulation and where it starts in the simulation and reference that to the real life, you know, actual carb of my CNC during my CNC carb. If I notice that it starts, you know, towards the bottom left of the uh, in the simulation and I see my machine going to the upper right, well, then I know that something's wrong and I can quickly pause the the actual carb. So let's take a look at this simulation go. So there you have an example of a V-bit carving this out. And that was actually a little bit fast, but you can change the speed here of how, of how fast you want to see that simulation actually go. That's actually still a little bit fast there, surprisingly, but it started here over on the left-hand side. And then I can go ahead and confirm that when I'm actually carving that, that I'm actually starting on the left-hand side. There we go. So we're going to start with this um, line here on the H first. And if it's not starting over there, then I know that something is wrong in my setup process. Maybe not here in the program, but now how I set up my CNC. So that is something to consider. So that's going to be the difference now in the simulation between version 7 and version 8. I want to share with you that in Carb Create, you're able to take images off the internet or images off of where you ever, wherever you get them from, right? Simple images, simple logos, and you're able to save that image and upload it to Carb Create, and it's able to convert that to a vector. Well, at least that's how you did it in version 7. You would have to save the image and then upload it into Carb Create for it to trace it. Well, now there's a feature that you're able to copy the image. I'm going to do that now. Copy image. 
and then you're able to go to Carb by Create and simply paste it into your design uh, grid, the design grid. So now in Carb by Create, I am in the design tab. All I have to do is press Command V since I'm using a Mac. If you're using Windows, you're going to press Control V. And I'm going to get this window and it says trace image, use as background or cancel. I'm going to trace the image. Personally, I would use it as trace image. I think use as background is more for Carbide Create Pro users. If I'm not mistaken, let me know in the comments if that is incorrect information. But I think that would be something more so for uh, Carbide 3D, uh, Carbide Pro users that are trying to card, wow, I can't speak. For Carbide Create Pro users that are trying to carve 3D uh, images things like that. Okay, but for me personally, I would just go with trace image and I get the trace image uh, tool. I'm just going to press trace image, press okay. And now down here towards the bottom left, every time to the bottom left, you get the image now in vectors and you're able to now carve this image. And so that is the copy and paste feature uh, that allows you to trace in Carb by Create version eight. And lastly, the fifth tool or feature that I thought was pretty pretty cool or noteworthy was the ability to open up Carb by Create version eight in separate windows. Previously in version seven, you can only work off the one single window of Carb by Create. You weren't able to open up different programs or windows to allow for multiple projects to be worked on at the same time. And that's some feedback that Carb by 3D was getting. The ability, you know, people were asking for the ability to have Carb by Create open and then the ability to have multiple windows in which programs or projects could be worked on. Well, Carb by Create, I guess, wasn't created to do that. So that what they allowed for us to do now in version 8 is to open up a brand new uh, program of Carb by Create version 8. So it's not a window within this one project. You know, if you think about it as a browser, you can open up one um one window of Google Chrome, for example, and then you can have multiple tabs within the one window of Google Chrome. Well, that's not what it's going to, that's not what's happening here. Here with this new version eight ability, you can come over to the file option and you can open up a new window and it's just going to open up Carb by Create version eight again. So you can see here I have Carb by Create version eight opening up again. And one of the rationales for this is because um, if this were to have multiple windows open and it crashes, well, everything just crashed. I guess the uh, the positive side is if this particular one crashes, my other windows with other projects should still be theoretically okay. All right, guys, so that is going to be it for the five features that I think that are noteworthy that I think would impact me personally in my workflow. So I hope this helps you guys, and I hope it helps you at least uh, decide a little bit more whether or not you want to play with this version. All right, guys, well, I hope this video helps, and I'll see you guys on the next one.